to this afternoon session, uh, a parallel session, uh, on, on the fourth day of our Kadav Fest that is celebrating the Dalit and Adivasi art and literature. I'm privileged and honored to be in great company this afternoon. Uh, two writers who are, um, you know, world acclaimed, renowned for their writing. That that isn't all. Uh, they're writers uh, who are controversial, interestingly, and my favorite because of the very interesting controversies that are around. I'll begin by uh, introducing them for people who, uh, you know, arrived. Uh, today, because we had them with us earlier in another round table on translation. And today we have invited them uh, as writers, and perhaps Mina is also going to translate for Salma. So we have here Mina Kandasani, Indian poet, uh, fiction writer, translator, activist, hailing from Chennai, Tamil Nadu, who has published two collections of wonderful poetry, Touch 2006, Miss Militancy that I'm having here, I'll be reading a small passage from that, in 2010. Uh, she has two critically acclaimed novels, The Gypsy Goddess and When I Hit You. When I Hit You was also shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2018. She has another work that recently came out, Exquisite Calibers. She was also invited to participate in the International Writing Program at the University of Iowa 2009. She has also been the Charles Vallis India Trust Fellow and numerous other uh, awards and uh, uh, acclamations she has to her credit. Most recently, she was the recipient of the Herman Keston Prize this year. Uh, we discovered uh, when she was with us for the uh, translator's workshop that she is a translator who has translated classical works uh, of great Tamil writers. Um, and she is also a translator for uh, the other writer we have invited here, Salma, uh, that is great. Uh, and she is also an activist, something that uh, uh, makes her controversial, interestingly controversial as well. She's somebody who has closely worked with issues of caste and gender, uh, persistently questioning how society puts us into stereotypical roles. She has also faced threats for her you know, fearless criticism of Hinduism and caste politics, etc. Her writing is phenomenal. And I thought that, you know, there is no better way of introducing her. There is no scene that needs to be read here. There is just, you know, perhaps a passage to set the tone of the conversation that I will be reading from her work, Miss Militancy, a couple of lines that are my favorite. And interestingly, this is a work that she has uh, dedicated to Wendy Doniger and a question there later for you. So I'll read this. Telling my story another way lets me forgive you. Twisting your story to the scariest extent allows me the liberty of trying to trust you. I work to not only get back at you, I actually fight to get back to myself. I do not write into patriarchy. My Mariama bays for blood. My Kali kills. My Draupadi strips. My Sita climbs on to a stranger's lap. All my women militate. They brave bombs. They belittle kings. They take on the sun, they take after me. And this, I think, interestingly, provides a sort of gist to her uh, writing and her writing style. Uh, the second person on board is uh, another writer, uh, Salma. Uh, she takes Salma as her pen name. Um, she's an Indian uh, Tamil writer, activist, and politician as well. Uh, she's a member of a political party involved in women's and transgender rights activism. Uh, she is also the founder of a non-government women's rights organization named Your Hope is Remaining, 
She has published uh, numerous anthologies of poems, An Evening and Another Evening in 2000, Green Angel 2003. She has a couple of novels to her credit, The Hours Past Midnight 2004, Dreams 2016. And I will read out uh, one of her poems. It is entitled, just a, a passage from the poem, which is entitled Home. My home's empty spaces banish me indirectly from this land. And I return resolving never to step beyond. The limits decreed to the courtyard of my own house. So these are the two uh, talented writers here. And I'd like to begin uh, this discussion or conversation uh, asking them, how did they reach where they are today? They have all, uh, you know, they've both talked about a certain kind of conditioning, uh, you know, a social conditioning that the good girls have to go through in their writing in different ways. What motivated them? Rather, what pushed them to, you know, test their limits and come here where they are openly and very boldly, uh, you know, writing about sexual taboos, talking about sexuality, using language that might be really offensive to many of us. So, to the two of you. This is a this is a very biographical question. What makes me the writer? Because I think it's a very personal journey for everybody. Uh, I grew up with very atheist parents. So I was aware of a lot of politics you know, that was going around me. Um, so there was the I was also a child of the eighties. Um, and if you are a Tamil in the eighties, uh, one of the big issues was the. At least in Chennai, was the Tamil Nilam liberation struggle. So uh, there were a lot of influences in my parents' life, and um, so my father was somebody who was, um, you know, born to a landless agricultural family. He grew up in an orphanage. At some point, he joined the RSS and then left the RSS because he was disgruntled with it. So it's really like. Um, he was politically dissatisfied because he was a Tamil nationalist in a party that was completely against, you know, Tamilness or local identities. Um, and my mother herself had, you know, a different, difficult or different type of childhood, and they had an anti-caste marriage. And I think one of those things that, you know, their anti-caste or inter-caste marriage did was that it freed them from normal societal expectations, so they could just throw themselves into activism, and they were both academics. Uh, my father was a first generation person who finished his school, finished college, finished university, went and taught. So, um, so I think that you know they, because of the rupture with the caste, they did not, um, they did not socialize among their own caste outlines. They socialized with radicals. So I was influenced by a lot of radical politics from the time I was young. So I think the Tamil nationalists or you know the struggle in Elam was a influence in my younger years. Um, the struggle for reservation was a major influence. My mom worked with the IIT Madras. Uh, it's still a Brahmin citadel, Brahmin citadel. So she went to court against them. Um, and when my mom went to court, I was only 12 years old. So I started meeting lawyers because she had to teach full time and somebody had to go and brief the lawyers in English and take notes. And she couldn't do it. She was the only learning member in my family at the time. And my father didn't write in English. So I came into, you know, um, awakening through a lot of these different uh, exposures, but I never thought of myself as a writer. I never considered myself like, what do I have to say? Because you don't know what you have to say. Um, I started by translating, uh, and my writing was something that was very precious to me. So you know, I was editing this magazine, or I would translate, and sometimes I would be so overcome with emotion, and then I don't know what I have to say and where I have to say it. So. I would just write a poem in my diary. So my writing was like really a secretive place where I put my anger, I put my sadness, I put my emotion, but I also put my desire because I think at some time I was really Kamala Das, you know, in my teenage 
and she was a massive influence because you know you were an Indian, you know whatever you are, you're still an Indian woman in, in an Indian woman's body, and what it is to feel love, what it is to feel desire. So I came into writing through a lot of these influences then, through the Dalit movement and all of this. So, um, and um, so yeah, it's, it's very strange that uh, I have to I have to talk about the journey because uh, uh, that's how I came into writing. So I don't know if that makes sense. So to me, it doesn't. It still seems like a surprise. I've been writing for twenty years. I started writing when I was seventeen, eighteen. It's now additional twenty years, but. It still feels new and every day takes me to new places. So that's all I have to say, I guess. Thank you very much, Monica. Rita, the idea is that you are motivated by the idea of being a young man. You are 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 a young man. அந்த போ காலை ஏழு மார்னிங் வாக் போனீங்க ரெஸ்ட் எடுக்கல இப்போதான் வந்தீங்கன்னு சொல்லி ஜோடிக்கு இப்போ கேட்டாங்க ஏன் இப்படி ஓடிக்கே இருக்கீங்க அப்படின்னு முப்பத்தஞ்சு வருஷம் நான் வீட்டுக்குள்ளே தான் இருந்தேன் பிறந்ததுல இருந்து அந்த அதுக்கப்புறம் தான் இப்போ எனக்கு வெளியில் போகிறதுக்கான வாய்ப்புகள் கிடைக்கிது அப்போ நான் ஓட ஆரம்பிக்கிறேன் ஓடணும் எவ்வளோ முடியுமோ அவ்வளோ ஓடணும் எவ்வளோ தூரம் ஓட முடியுமோ அவ்வளோ தூரம் ஓடணும் அப்படிங்கிறதுனால தான் நான் இப்போது ஓட ஆரம்பிச்சிருக்கேன் இந்த மோட்டிவேஷன் அப்படின்னு சொல்கிறப்போ எது மோட்டிவேட் பண்ணிச்சு பண்ணிச்சு என்னோட எழுத்த அப்படின்றப்ப மோட்டிவேஷன் அப்படின்றத விட எதை என்னை சப்ரஸ் பண்ணிச்சு அதனால தான் நான் எழுத ஆரம்பித்தேன் எனக்கு வந்து ஸ்கூலுக்கு போகிறதுக்கான வாய்ப்பு கிடைக்கல நைன்த்து வரைக்கும் தான் படித்தேன் அப்புறம் ஒரு சின்ன கன்சர்வேட்டிவ் முஸ்லீம் வில்லேஜ் அதுக்குள்ளே வந்து பெண்கள் எஜுகேஷன் அல்லது வெளி உலகம் அல்லது வெளி உலக தொடர்பு இப்படி எதுவுமே இல்லாத ஒரு ஒரு வீட்டுக்குள்ளே இருக்க வேண்டிய ஒரு சூழல் அதை வந்து எங் ஒரு எங் ஒரு இளமை பருவங்கிறது ஒரு ஜெயிலில் இருக்கிறது மாதிரி தான் நான் எந்த ஆணையுமே நான் பார்த்துறேன் என்னோடய கல்யாணம் வரைக்கும் அது ஒரு இளமை பருவத்தில் ஒரு மிக மோசமான ஒரு காலகட்டமான உளைச்சலை தரக்கூடிய ஒரு காலகட்டம் அப்போ தான் நான் இலக்கியங்கள் வாசிக்க ஆரம்பிக்கிறேன் லிட்ரேச்சர் உலக இலக்கியம் நான் வாசிக்க வாசிக்க எனக்கு உலகத்தை பார்க்கணும் உலகம் வந்து இவ்வளோ பெரிய உலகம் இவ்வளவும் விஷயங்கள் நடந்துகிட்டே இருக்கு போர் நடக்குது எங்கேயோ நாட்டில் டென்னிஸ் விளையாண்டுட்டுருக்காங்க பெண்கள் வந்து சினிமாவில் வந்து நடிச்சிட்டு இருக்காங்க பெண்கள் வந்து ஜிம்னாஸ்டிக் பண்ணுறாங்க அவங்களுடைய ட்ரெஸ் கோடு அப்புறம் அந்த ஜி ஸ்விம்மிங் போகிறாங்க அதில் அவங்களுடைய அட்டலிக்ஸோட ட்ரெஸ்ஸு இதெல்லாம் பார்க்குறப்போ பெண்கள் தன்னை வந்து எப்படி வந்து ப்ரூவ் பண்ணிகிட்ருக்காங்க அவங்களுடைய அடையாளத்தை ஆனால் எல்லாமே தெரிஞ்சும் நான் வீட்டுக்குள்ளே இருக்க வேண்டிய ஒரு கட்டாயம் என்னால் எதுவுமே பண்ண முடியாது தெரியும் என்னால் எதுவும் பண்ண முடியாது அப்படின்றப்ப தான் என்னை சுற்றி இருக்கக்கூடிய பெண்கள் அதை எல்லாத்தையும் சந்தோஷம் நான் எப்படி எடுத்துகிட்டு வாழ்கிறாங்க அவங்களுக்கு வெளி உலகம் தெரியாதப்போ அவங்க வந்து அதில் வந்து அவங்க எப்படி சந்தோஷமாக இருக்க முடியும் ஆனால் அவங்க எவ்வளோ துக் துக்கமான ஒரு வாழ்க்கை அவங்க வாழ்கிறாங்க இது எல்லாத்தையும் நான் வந்து ஏ ஃபீல் பண்ண ஆரம்பித்தேன் அந்த சப்ரஸ் தான் என்னை எழுத வச்சுன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் அது தொடர்ந்து நான் எழுத ஆரம்பிக்கிறேன் எழுதி எனக்கு அதில் நிறைய பிரச்சனைகள் எழுதி இப்போ மிஸ் பண்ணுறப்போ வரக்கூடிய பிரச்சனைகள் அவங்க ஸ்ட்ரீம் பண்ணி வந்து எழுதக்கூடாதுன்ற பிரச்சனைகள் இப்படி தொடர்ச்சியாக எழுதுறது எழுதுறது தப்பு பிரசுரிக்கிறது தப்பு அப்புறம் பப்ளிஷ் ஆனாலும் அதை யாராவது என்ன எனக்கு லெட்ரு போட்டாலும் அது தப்பு அப்புறம் திருமணத்துக்கு பிறகு நடந்த இதே போன்ற பிரச்சனைகள் இது எல்லாத்தையும் நான் எழுதி எழுதி தான் கடக்கணும் அப்படின்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் எழுத ஒரே ஒரு விஷயந்தான் இவ்வளவு ஃபைட் பண்ணுறதுக்கு ஃபேமிலியோட சொசைட்டியோட என்னோட பண்டமெண்டல் லிஸ்ட் எல்லாம் மதம் சார்ந்த விஷயங்கள் மதத்துக்கு எதிராக நான் நான் எழுதுகிற விஷயங்கள் மதத்துக்கு எதிராகனா அது மதத்தில் இருக்கக்கூடிய பெண்ணடிமைத்தனத்துக்கு எதிரான எழுத விஷயங்கள் இது எல்லாத்துக்கும் நிறைய எதிர்ப்பு தொடர்ச்சியாக வந்து எல்லா இடத்துலையும் வந்துகிட்டே இருந்தது இன்றைக்கும் எனக்கு எனக்கு ஒரு பெரிய பேர்லாம் என்னோடய கன்வியூனிட்டியில் கிடையாது நான் வெளியில் எவ்வளோதான் பார்ப்பதாக இருந்தாலும் என்னத்துக்கு வந்து என்ன ஒரு மோசமான ஒரு பெண்ணாக தான் நான் பார்க்கப்படுறேன் நான் வந்து நான் உண்மையை பேசினேன் லிட்ரேச்சர்ங்கிறது அரசியல் ஆக்டிவிசம் அப்புறம் உண்மையை பேசுவது வழியாக நமக்கு கிடைக்கக்கூடிய மன திருப்தி 
அது ஒண்ணுதான் நான் பேசாத இந்த டைம்ல பேச ஆரம்பிக்கிறேன் எல்லாத்தையும் அதைத்தான் செய்யுது நினைக்கிறேன் அதுதான் என்னோட வேலையும் அதுதான் ரைட்டரா அதான் என்னோட Uh, so um, the question from uh, yeah he was what motivates you to write and um, uh, i actually wanted to answer that by going to a question that judith asked me earlier today which is that you've been running on morning you went for a walk in the morning and then you're out of the town and then you know you come back and you're not taking any rest and you're already ready for this meeting how do you manage to do this how do you manage to keep running and then the question is i answered her by telling him that for 35 years of my life i was stuck at home that i had no opportunity to go out and therefore as a result now it's it's after 35 years that i started running so i have a lot to run i have lot to do i have a lot of places to go to and uh, i have never stopped running so this is what you know um this is how i look at the question i also want to kind of rephrase the question so the question that came to me is what motivates me and i want to take this word motivate and say what motivates me is what suppressed me so my motivation comes out of my suppression and here uh, i want to say that you know i came from a small conservative muslim family and i did not have the chance to get educated i did not have the chance to complete school i went to school until the ninth standard and uh, that uh, you know uh, my younger days were spent in what i would say was like inside of a jail and the first time i even uh, met men was uh, at the time of my marriage uh, so this was the kind of situation in which i grew and i believe it is a huge punishment when one is young <coughs> and at the same time it was a world of literature that showed me what world lay outside what was happening outside and i was you know looking at women who were playing tennis women who were acting in movies women who were doing gymnastics women who were swimming and i was thinking just not only looking at the dress code but also seeing how women were proving themselves and i felt uh, the question is that you know the women were out there and doing things and i could not be happy knowing that i was not doing these things but i was also even more concerned with the question it's okay when we don't know the outside world to accept our circumstances it's okay to accept you know our status quo when we are inside our house but how are the women around to be happy how are they happy knowing that the outside world has all of these other opportunities all of these other avenues for women and so this made me really question the state of women and all of this suppression this is what made me right but then again i have to say that you know this i think i've answered the question on motivation but then i want to also answer the question on what makes me going what keeps me going and here i think that you know when i started writing that was seen as wrong when i started publishing that was seen as wrong and once my books were in press and people started writing to me and interacting with my work that was also seen as a wrong as a wrong thing to do so um, my writing was you know at this time opposed by literally everybody the family was opposing it society was opposing it and religious people and in fact i was not writing against my religion i also want to make this very clear i was writing against the misogyny in my religion i was writing against the oppression of women in my religion so all of these forces were opposing me and so i believe that for me literature is about politics literature is about activism but literature is most of all about the feeling of satisfaction which comes with speaking the truth we had what we can say a more empowered childhood compared to the other and uh, they ended up you know picking on the same issues and you know taking the same trajectory to a certain extent which shows that you know we we need to relook at uh, empowerment when it comes to women um and the two of you talked about you know your own struggles um and you might be um as writers and perhaps even in today's scenario when you are established to a certain extent there might be struggles in finding a uh, right kind of publishers uh, due to the kind of uh, content uh, that you want to you know incorporate within your writing be it uh, your bodies or sexuality etc so the, the second question i had had in mind was um, related to this that on one hand you are narrating intimate stories of characters you know who are living their lives who are dreaming um and going on on the other hand your characters are also very very rebellious in the sense that they are challenging the norms and you know putting out their statements to their actions in the world how do you 
bring the intimacy of your writing and the, and the politics of it together. The question was, how do you bring the intimacy of your writing and the politics? Yes, how is well? the uh, private that, and the public and the political uh, invited into the text? How is that, you know, magically woven together? Okay, uh, I just want to add something which is about empowered childhood. It was also very fractured childhood, I believe, for me, because on the one hand, it's true that I was, you know, um, I was exposed to all of this, but I wore my first pair of jeans when I was 25. <laughs> I, I I was beaten up because um, uh, a boy called me on my landline. I think I was in my 10th standard or something. Um, I literally have never invited a boyfriend home. Um, and I also think that I was not allowed to cut my hair until I was you know, 25. And I decided that actually if I cut my hair, my parents can't stick it back to me. You know, like it's irreversible process. <laughs> so... Um, so it's very true that, you know, on the one hand, people can be very progressive, but when it's their daughters, they want to be very patriarchal, which is also why I agree that when I wrote my last book, it was called The Order's Way to Rape You, uh, Tamil Tigers in the time, Tamil Tigresses in the real implementation struggle. I wrote about how the LTT actually made me feel very strong because they were having guns at that time, you know, they were 17, 18 year olds, 19 year olds with guns. And here I was like, basically trembling to get permission from my parents for something. So, you know, they could be very radical in terms of their social justice, but when it comes to your home, they would still be patriarch, you know? And I don't speak a lot about it, and I don't, because it still hurts that my parents are very alive, and I think they gave me the best of what they thought was very good for me, but I don't know, it, it was empowering in the sense that I was exposed to a lot of things, but uh, I do not think I was a very free person, you know? And I think now we kind of made a crease in which they respect what I do, and I respect where they are coming from, I think. So I think this tradition and modernity clash is always there. Uh, so yeah, obviously it was very different from Salma's childhood, but I don't think it was like, I was absolutely, I was not raised by liberal parents, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was a lot of, lot of rules, a lot of structures, which also made me write all of this very provocative stuff, I believe, just because uh, what do you do when you're convincing a girl, a good Indian girl, a good Tamil girl, Especially good Tamil girl, then you tell them that you know good Tamil women are also not good Tamil women. So, yeah, the yeah, bad, the, yeah, I was the trying the to bad bring aspect, that the bad aspect of you know, that persistent sense of hypocrisy when you come out to define empowerment of women, especially within the Indian context. Yeah, and yeah. that comes so across to beautifully but in thank your you so much, yeah? uh, I think the second question: uh, How do you marry the intimacy of what you write about? and the public nature of it. I'm not going to take a long time to answer because I've already taken a long time. Uh, I just want to say that all of politics starts at the level of intimacy. It starts at the level of how your mother addresses your father. It starts at the level of how children are conditioned. It starts in the bedroom. It starts in the kitchen. So I don't think that there's any running away from it. So in fact, when you are writing intimacy, you are writing the world. So for me, they, do, they coexist a lot. And I think that's where the most hypocritical nature of people come from because they can be very progressive outside, but they could still hold on to a lot of old ideas or you know, oppressive ideas in the realm of the home. And I think uh, that's also why if you look at, let's say, fascist movements, they concentrate so much on controlling the family because the family, even for Hitler, was the basic unit or the building block of the state. Because, and that's also for the San Parivar, for the Hindu forces, that as long as they control the structure of the heterosexual, heteronormative, patriarchal family, if that's right, then it's, the rest of the structure will fall into place. But once there's rupture there, once that's questioned, the roles are questioned, then I think social transformation happens. But uh, I think I've spoken about some Uh, experience 
என்னை சுற்றி நடந்துட்டு இருக்கக்கூடிய விஷயங்கள பதிவு செய்கிறது வந்து ஒரு முக்கியமான விஷயம் ஏன்னா என்னுடைய அனுபவங்களை நான் கதைகளாக மாற்ற போவோ கவிதைகளாக மாற்ற போவோ சுற்றி இருக்கக்கூடியவர்களுடைய லைஃப் தான் அதிகமாக நான் வந்து பதிவு செய்ய வேண்டிய கட்டாயம் இருக்கு ஏன்னா நான் எனக்கு எது பிடிக்குதோ அது சில விஷயங்களையாவது நான் செய்ய முடியும் சில விஷயங்களில் நான் வந்து என்னென்னே எடுத்து நான் எழுதுறது மூலமாகவோ அல்லது வாசிக்கிறது மூலமாகவோ ட்ராவல் பண்ணுறது மூலமாகவோ எனக்கு சில அவுட்லெட் கிடைக்குது அல்லது நிம்மதி கிடைக்குது அந்த மாதிரி இருக்கும் ஆனால் எதுவுமே இல்லாமல் சுற்றி என்னை சுற்றி இருக்கக்கூடியவங்களுடைய லைஃப் தான் நான் அதிகமாக என்னோட கதைகளில் வந்திருக்கு ஒரு கவிதை நான் எழுதுனது வந்து இப்போ இரண்டாம் ஜாமத்து கதைன்னு ஒரு கவிதை அந்த கவிதையில் வந்து ஆண் பெண் உறவுகள் வந்து குடும்பங்கிற அமைப்புக்குள்ளே எப்படி வந்து ஒரு மோசமான ஒன்றா இருக்குது அப்படிங்கிறத நான் அதில் சொல்லியிருக்கேன் அதில் வந்து பெண்ணுடைய உடலை வந்து அவன் வந்து மோச டிஸ்கிரைப் பண்ணுவான் அசிங்கமாக இருக்கு கல்யாணத்துக்கு அப்புறம் முன்னாடி இருந்தப்போ குழந்தைக்கு அப்புறம் நீ எப்படி மாறிடுச்சு உன்னோட உடம்பு அப்படிங்கிறது அது வந்து ரொம்ப ஒரு பேசிக்காக ஒரு ஒரு குடும்பத்துக்குள்ளேயும் பார்த்துட்டு இருந்த ஒரு செய்தியால் நான் பார்க்குறேன் அது நிறைய பெண்கள் சொல்லுவாங்க ஹஸ்பண்ட் வந்து என்னை போனால் நீ அழகாக இல்லைன்னு சொல்கிறாரு என்னோட உடம்பு வந்து ரொம்ப மோசமாக பெருத்துருச்சுன்னு சொல்லுவார் இப்படிலாம் சொல்லிட்டு பேசிப்பாங்க ஆனால் அந்த விஷயத்தை பற்றி அவங்களுக்கு வந்து பெருசாக கம்ப்ளைண்ட்ஸ் இருக்காது கோபம் இருக்காது அது ஒரு செய்தியாக வந்து ஷேர் பண்ணிப்பாங்க ஆனால் எனக்கு வந்து என்ன பொறுத்தளவுக்கு அது பெரிய ஒரு பொலிட்டிக்கல் விஷயமாக பார்ப்பேன் வந்து அது பெரிய ஒரு மோ கோபத்தை உருவாக்கக்கூடிய விஷயமா இருக்கும் அப்போ வந்து என்னை சுற்றி இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த மாதிரியான விஷயங்களை வந்து பதிவு செய்கிறது தான் ரொம்ப முக்கியம் அது பர்சனல் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் அப்படிங்கிறத தாண்டி என்னை சுற்றி நிகழக்கூடிய பெண்களுடைய வாழ்க்கை சார்ந்த புரிய வாழ்க்கையை வந்து அது கூட நான் பதிவு செய்ய நடக்கிட்டுருக்குது அப்படின்னா பல விஷயங்கள் அப்படி தான் நடந்தது இன்றைக்கி வந்து பெண்களுடைய வாழ்க்கைங்கிறத அந்த குடும்ப அமைப்புக்குள்ளே எவ்வளோ வந்து இறுக்கமான ஒன்றா அது வந்து நான் நான் நானாக இருந்தாலும் கூட சில விஷயங்கள் நம்ம தான் பார்க்கணும் அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு நிலை இருக்குது எவ்வளோ தான் மேலே போனாலும் பெண் அப்படிங்கிறதுக்கான ஒரு இடத்தை வந்து இந்த சமூகம் வரையறுத்து வச்சுருக்கு அப்புறம் தாய்மைங்கிற சில விஷயங்களை வரையறுத்து வச்சுருக்கு அதுக்குள்ளே நம்ம எவ்வளவு தான் கொடுக்கணுமோ அதை கொடுத்துட்டே இருக்கணும் அப்படின்னு எதிர்பார்ப்பையும் இந்த சமூகம் வச்சுருக்கு அதுதான் இந்த நாட்டுடைய மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு சாபக்கேடாக நான் பார்க்குறேன் அது ஃபண்டமெண்டலிசங்கிறது அந்த குடும்ப அமைப்புக்குள்ளே தான் துவங்குது குடும்ப அமைப்பு பற்றி நம்ம பல தடவை வந்து உடைக்கணும் அப்படின்னு நம்ம பேசிக்கிட்டே இருக்கணும் நிச்சயமாக நான் குடும்ப அமைப்பை வந்து எப்போவுமே நான் எடுத்து தாங்க வந்துட்டு பெண்ணை அடிமைப்படுத்தக்கூடிய ஒன்றா இருந்துகிட்டே இருக்கு பெரியார் என்ன சொன்னாருன்னா அதுதான் குடும்ப அமைப்பு வந்து பெண்ணுக்கு எதிராக சுழற்சியாக இருந்துகிட்டே இருக்கு இலக்கியத்துக்குள்ளே நம்ம முடிஞ்ச அளவுக்கு அது ஒன்றே விஷயங்களெல்லாம் பதிவு செய்யணும் நினைக்கிறேன் ஸோ ஸோ த திங் இஸ் வென் இட் கம்ஸ் டு த கொஷன் ஆஃப் ரைட்டிங் வி ஆர் ஆஃபன் ரைட்டிங் த லைஃப்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆர் செல்ஸ் அண்ட் அவர் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் த எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தோஸ் அரவுண்ட் பிகாஸ் தே ஆர் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸிங் திங்ஸ் தட் வி ஆர் நாட் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸிங் so in my life as a writer for instance i travel a lot i read a lot and meet a lot of people and in some ways this uh, forms the basis of escape for me or it provides an outlet for me and uh, when then i look at the women around me and i think that they do not have the same outlets they do not have the same means of escape so how do they cope and how do they process what's happening to them and uh, in one of my poems uh, irandam jamat in the uh, the story of the second uh, the second one midnight yeah midnight, yeah, midnight. Um, so in one of these poems the man describes uh, how the woman's body has changed since childhood and this is something that i witnessed around me like you know women would come and tell uh, you know the husband was complaining about the body or he was saying how you become fatter or how you you know uh, describe all of these things and they would just plainly register it as a fact they would not talk about it you know Uh, they did not make them angry but for me on the other hand it was deeply upsetting i saw this as a political issue and uh, i decided to write about it and here i want to say that you know women's lives are hugely conditioned by social structures by the structure of family and we live in a patriarchal society where as women we are expected to constantly give and there are certain roles that we are supposed to provide and nurture and there's also the framework of motherhood which makes us constantly give and give and give and uh, i believe that the fundamentalism in our society uh, uh, and uh, what is a curse on our society 
is this, uh, you know, the role in which women have been forced into under patriarchal systems. So I want to write about it and I want to record that. Uh, I would like to thank both the writer and Chandra Shekhar to take over the stage for half an hour for a conversation. And then we will have all the three writers for reading as well as question and answer. Thank you so much. Three of my favorite writers here. It feels quite, quite indulgent, you know, that I invited them here so I can listen to you. It's very exciting. So, um, thank you very much. I have been sort of, uh, you've been in touch for quite a while now. I'm sort of half interviewing you <laughs> over several Zoom meetings and then online. So that is also, uh, there is a, an inter, um, the interview between, you know, Ruhu Shamala, us and um, Saudi Jamia. Uh, as part of the online program of Hada Fest. So I am not going to <laughs> ask you any more questions. I'll just very briefly introduce you because ultimately Rumu Shamala does not really need an introduction either. I just like any of our wonderful writers. But I know Gogu Shamala's work only in the English translation and there's only, uh, her, only her short story collection has been translated. You know, and with uh, different titles in English, it's Father may be a, um, a big elephant, Father may be an elephant, and to Mother only a small basket, but dot dot dot. <laughs> Whereas the actually, so which is the title of the first um, short story, and in the German translation, it's the, the Lament of the Water Tank, yeah, which gave it the title of the entire collection. This um, has originally been published in translation by uh, Navayana, and then very recently by Tilly Access Press, who also um, published Salma's you know, latest novel in, um, in Mina's translation. So they are also part of, of our network, so that's why I wanted to kind of have the mention. And I know that I've learned over the last few days that Shreya <laughs> is an avid researcher, and it almost seems like you're writing your short stories as a pastime, and, and the really hard work is, is the research. She's also edited the first collection of uh, Dali Gugan's writing in Telugu, yeah, um, looking for a um, publisher uh, in, the, in the English translation. And she has um, produced this biography of, of this politician. She has worked, you know, she's done so much research. She's an activist, you know, she's really rather remarkable. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you, you know, what you both decided to talk about, <laughs> since we've already so exhausted you talking about so many things. So I want to thank Chandra Shekha, and I will inter introduce him too. And uh, I've known Chandra for a few years, he's also been part of the network for quite, some, quite, quite a while now. Um, I met you, I think, at Pune, you yes. know, when uh, you gave um, an uh, a paper which eventually also ended up in Dalit text, you know, uh, a collection of critical essays and interviews that Reed I and Kesa Chinarayana published a while ago. Chandra is a researcher on Dalits and Christianity, conversion, gender, and social history, he completed his PhD at IFLU and has received international scholarships, for example, for the UK and Germany. And he now teaches at the SAS RC and CBR Government Degree College in Andhra Pradesh. And I uh, thank them both very much for having given us you know, a lot of thought. And I'm curious to hear <laughs> your questions. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to share chair with uh, Gobisha Malata. I met her for the first time in 2009 when I was in my MPhil as part of my MPhil thesis PG work. I met her. Uh, we're going to start with the reading. Uh, she reads a small extract from her book, then uh, I'll ask some questions from her work. Hey Tataki, you bloody bitch, you are a small girl, are you? 
what makes you come here like a man and watering the groundnut fields? In our houses, girls like you don't step into the fields. You, Mala and Maria, don't even know that girls have to be kept at home. You are a small girl, are you? Cursing her. He thrust his hand into her blouse. Her small hands couldn't throw, throw off the landlord's fat paw. His body felt like an iron post. Balamma trembled all over. Her mouth went dry. One corner of her mind recalled the women in the Mala and Madiga settlements whispering about her, how the landlords had taken one woman or another. Then it struck her, this bastard is going to do something wrong. Something awful, but he simply couldn't, but she simply couldn't free herself from the landlord's hands. Not knowing what to do, she threw herself onto the ground, but he continued to drag her. Do I have to drag you now? Why shouldn't I waste my time, my energy? Stand up and walk. Do you think I will let you go if you fall on the ground? He said, I will drag you like a fallen branches if I have to. Master, let me go, please. I fall at your feet. Apo, abo, amo, balama, how? Do you think they will come running as soon as you call out? Will they stay alive if they do? Why are you shouting at the top of your voice? Thundered the karnam. You really have a swollen head. You watered the fields before my man. Do you? How he slapped her heart on her cheek. Balama was thrown to the distance. He went after her, grabbed her hand and bent over to drag her again. She took aim and kicked him as hard as she could on the growing with both her legs. Oh, I am dead, he said and fell back. She took her chance to raise herself and ran without looking back. Thataki, you tramp. That demon is running, running away. Catch her, catch her, shouted the landlord as he collapsed. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and hearing me. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, this is your first book, Nalapotu, uh, Black Dawn. It's, it records more than 50 uh, no, women's lives, women writers' lives. It is regarded as first Dalit woman anthology in Telugu language. Your second book, Nene Balani. This is also a kind of first biography of a uh, Sada Lakshmi who was a politician from Manuel Scavenging community. Yes, she was also a minister, endowment minister. I want to ask you the methodology which you followed in these two books. Because unlike your third book, which is short stories, a collection of short stories, these two are different. I wanted to know because this records, uh, this, this starts uh, the life stories, uh, the people who live in, you know, first decade of 20th century, start from 1921. So I wanted to know what is the methodology which you followed. Uh, this is a very important question. Um, in Telangana and Andhra, uh, 19... 87 and 1991 law, incidents there in 
చుందు కాలుకు చేదు ఫస్ట్ చుందు సెకండ్ ఒక దగ్గరనేమో ఒక ఆరు మందిని ఇంకొక దగ్గర ఎనిమిది మందిని డామినెంట్ కాస్ట్ వాళ్ళు అప్పుడు ఒక రకంగా సీరియస్ అయిపోయింది అప్పటికే కొంత నేను లిటరేచర్ నా ఎడ్యుకేషన్లో ఉన్నప్పుడు కొంత చా అప్పుడు నేను ఇంటర్మీడియట్ చదువుతూ ఉన్నాను చదువుతున్నప్పుడు ఒక చదువు మీదనే ఉన్న ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఈ హత్యలు జరిగిన తర్వాత సడన్గా చాలా సీరియస్గా ఆలోచించి అందరూ మనసులే కానీ ఒక కులమైనందుకు ఎందుకు ఇంత మూర్ఖంగా ఇంత దారుణంగా చంపేస్తారు అనేది ఒక షాకింగ్ నుండి ఆలోచన మొదలైంది దాని తర్వాత ఒక స్ట్రీమ్గా ఒక ప్రవాహంగా తెలుగు దళిత లిటరేచర్ వచ్చింది నేను చాలా పవర్ఫుల్గా రాశారు అప్పుడు ఒక దాదాపు ఎయిట్ ఎయిటీ నైంటీ రైటర్స్ మేజర్గా పురుషులు రాశారు ఇంకా దానికి తోడు సాలిడారిటీ కవిత్వం వచ్చింది అదొక పీరియడ్ అనుకోవచ్చు దళిత సాహిత్యానికి దాన్ని అంతా నేను దగ్గరగా ఫాలో అవుతూ ఫాలో అవుతూ వీళ్ళు అందరూ ఎన్ని మాట్లాడుతున్నారు మరి స్త్రీలు ఎక్కడ ఉన్నారు అనే ప్రశ్నతో అప్పటికి నేను మెంటల్గా చాలా యాక్టివ్గా ఫాలో అవుతున్నాను చుండూరు మూమెంట్ కాలించే మూమెంట్ ఆ మూమెంట్లో విమెన్ చాలా యాక్టివ్గా ఉన్నాయి ఎవిడెన్స్ కాడి నుండి ఆందోళన కాడి నుండి ఆ విక్టిమ్ బాధితులకు భోజనాలు అరేంజ్ చేసే కాడి నుండి ముఖ్యమంత్రులను హోమ్ మినిస్టర్స్ని క్వశ్చన్ చేసేంత వాళ్ళకి చాలా యాక్టివ్గా ఉన్నారు ఆలీషమ్మ గ్రేసమ్మ వీళ్ళందరూ వాళ్ళందరినీ నేను డైరెక్ట్ కలవడము అట్లా ఉన్నప్పుడు సాహిత్యానికి వస్తే అంత మెల్లుగా అనిపిస్తున్నారు విమెన్ ఎక్కడ ఉన్నారు అన్నప్పుడు నాకు ఈ ప్రశ్నతో కొంతమంది ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఫెమిలిస్ట్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ని నాన్ ఫెమిలిస్ట్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ని అప్రోచ్ అయినప్పుడు మంచి ఐడియా ఇది మీకు ఏమన్నా అవకాశం ఉంటే కలెక్ట్ చెయ్యు అనుకున్నప్పుడు నేను ఎక్కడ పోయినా ఒకటే ప్రశ్న దళితులకు చదివే లేదు ఇంకా లిటరేచర్ ఎక్కడ ఉంది అనే ప్రశ్నతో అవును చదువు లేదు కదా మరి ఇప్పుడు చదువు రావాలంటే ఎట్లా చదువు ఎక్కడ నుండి వచ్చింది వీళ్ళకి అనేది వచ్చినప్పుడు మూడు రీజియన్స్ మూడు డిఫరెంట్ రాయలసీమ తెలంగాణ అండ్ ఆంధ్ర ఇక్కడికి వెళ్ళినప్పుడు ఒక్కొక్క రీజియన్లో ఒక్కొక్క ప్రత్యేకత ఉంది ఆంధ్రాలో కొంత క్రిస్టానిటీతో చదువు వచ్చింది రాయలసీమలో చదువు లేదు తెలంగాణలో కొంత ఆర్య సమాజం నుండి చాలా లిమిటెడ్ నిజాం పీరియడ్లో చాలా లిమిటెడ్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ కానీ ఎక్కువ హైర్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్లో కొద్దిమంది చదువుకుంటూ ఉంటారు అక్కడ నుండి చూసినప్పుడు ఒకవైపు సంస్కరణ ఉద్యమాలు ఇంకొక వైపు మిషనరీలు ఇంకొక వైపు దళిత మూమెంట్ నుండి దళిత ఉమెన్కి ఎడ్యుకేషన్ అందించాలనేది ఒక అర్థమైంది అప్పుడు వీళ్ళు ఏం రాశారు వీళ్ళ రాసిన దాంట్లో యాంటీ కాస్ట్ ఐడియాలజీ ఉందా ఐడియాలజీతో ఎవరిని అడ్రస్ చేశారు అన్నప్పుడు నేను అప్పటికే సాహిత్యంలో ఒక శిల్పము శిల్పము వస్తువు ఈ నామ్స్ ఏవైతున్నాయో వాటిని పక్కకు పెట్టేసి అసలు ఏ ఫామ్లో ఏ శిల్పంలో దళిత స్త్రీలు రాశారు ఎవరికి వీళ్ళు నివేదించారు క్రిస్టియన్ స్త్రీలు అయితే ప్రభువుకు నివేద నివేదిస్తారు మాలా మాదిగా స్త్రీలు ఒరిజినల్గా దే ఆర్ నాట్ హిందూస్ దట్ టైమ్ బట్ ఒరిజినల్గా వాళ్ళు నివేదించడం ఎవరికంటే ఎల్లమ్మకు పోచమ్మకు పైసమ్మకు పెద్ద మైసమ్మకు ఊరడమ్మకు వాళ్ళు నివేదిస్తారు అనమాట ఆ అంటచిబిలిటీని వాళ్ళు దేవతలకు అట్లా నివే నివేదించడం అనేది అది ఓరల్గా చాలా ఉన్నాయి కానీ నేను ఓరల్గా తీసుకోలేదు ఎందుకు అని అంటే ఇది ఒక ఛాలెంజ్ అక్షరాలలో తీసుకోవడం అనేది అసలు ఎప్పటి నుండి వచ్చింది ఎందుకు వచ్చింది ఎంతమంది రాశారు అనేది క్లియర్గా తెలియాలి అనమాట నేను అక్షరాలలో మాత్రమే తీసుకోవాలి అనే మెథడ్తో ఇది ఈ మెథడ్ పెట్టుకున్నప్పుడు నా దగ్గరికి ఎవరు రారు నేనేం చేయాలి వాళ్ళ దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళాలి అప్పటి వంట అకాడమిక్గా కానీ మెయిన్ స్ట్రీమ్ లిటరేచర్లో కానీ అది లేదు దళిత స్త్రీల సంకలనము అని అంటే కొత్త మెథడ్ని ఫాలో అవ్వాలి కొత్త మెథడ్ అంటే నేను వాళ్ళ దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళాలి వాళ్ళ దగ్గరికి అంటే అప్పటి వరకు రాస్తున్న రైటర్స్ అప్పటి వరకు మూమెంట్ లీడర్స్ ఈవెన్ చర్చ్ పాస్టర్స్ వీళ్ళందరి దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళి ఆ లైబ్రరీలో నేను కలెక్ట్ చేశాను దట్స్ ద న్యూ మెథడాలజీ ఫర్ దిస్ అంతాలజీ there were in the 80s uh, andhra pradesh witnessed 
massacres, Dalit massacres, particularly Karam Chedu and uh, Chundu. I was doing 12 uh, plus 2 studies that time. Uh, those incidents shocked me like anything. Uh, you know, many, uh, many Dalit men and women were killed in those incidents. So that time, uh, many writings have come. Almost, you know, 80, 18 or 80 uh, writers started to write about sympathizing the, the problems which happened there, the killings which happened there. Uh, she was very active that time. She went to those places. She met people who were very much active in those uh, you know, meetings, in, the, in those movements. Uh, she met particularly women who were there. Uh, she named uh, somebody like Ali Samma, Gre Samma. While she was reading all those writings, she got an idea that, uh, you know, whatever the writings have come so far, they were all by men. There is no uh, written piece by women. Uh, but though I saw women there, uh, they have been serving the food, they are inviting the people, but nothing uh, uh, in written form. Then she started to think uh, why this absence is there in the literature. Then she, the, the first question which came to her mind is uh, to write, I have to see the education. How many are there, uh, how many women are there who are educated? To write about them, we need to see how many educated women uh, are there. So that time, United Andhra Pradesh it has three regions Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Andhra, and uh, Rail Sima. When she started to do research, she could see uh, women from Dalit community who got you know, education because of their Christian background from missionaries. That, is, that, that was in Andhra. But in Rail Sima, where I come from, there was no, almost nil. There were no women uh, from the Dalit community with uh, educational background. Coming to Telangana, there was a little bit, uh, you know, education was there because of efforts of Nizam. So she came to a conclusion that because of missionary efforts and social reforms, uh, a couple of women got education. So she wanted to bring the writings of those women. She came to know many oral writings oral narratives, but she didn't want to record those. She wanted to see what was there in written form uh, much before, much earlier. So to, in, our, in, in order to collect all those written works, she traveled three regions. She met uh, people who were alive then, who just started writing. Uh, she met uh, party, she met leaders, she met church fathers, she visited libraries, secular libraries as well as church libraries because uh, most of the women writers uh, in early days were from Christian community, I mean, that is who embraced Christianity. In, the, in order to bring this book, Black Dog, I, what we say, I could overcome the existing literary norms. There were norms to write a book, this should be the story, this should be the form, this should be the style, this should be the structure, but I didn't want. I want to see, I want to bring out whatever is written, whatever is there in written form. Most of the uh, first women, uh, you know, form was, uh, writings were songs, Christian women praying to Christ. Dalit women, uh, non-Christian Dalit women praying to Elama, Goddess. So I want to bring all those. That's the uh, uh, results of that. And uh, please comment on this book, Nene uh, Balane. Uh, this is the, uh, this also has its own history to bring this book. This is not your biography. This is not a biography of somebody who is close to you. She is, uh, you know, much elder to you. But finally, uh, this is the uh, history of, it's a kind of ethnographic field work. It's a history of a woman whose voice was completely buried. This book brought out them. Similarly, Sada Lakshmi also, she was almost unknown. She reached to many heights in politics. From Dalit community, that too from a scavenging community. But you brought such a, you know, excellent book. I wanted to know the, the methodology which you used for this book also. Please, short. Miss Nalapudu, Tarwata, Nenu, Idi Tuskochadu, Nenuda, Najerni Guda, 
लर्निंग एक्चुअली आई लर्न सो मच फ्रॉम नाला कबूतरी नीने बलानी नीने कबूतरी तो ना जर्नी लो नीने चालक स्पूर्ति वहाँ तीस को नाने ना बैकग्राउंड लो माँ इनलो ये बर पेट्टा डा मूवमेंट लो गानी इतना पॉलिटिशियंस का का माँ चाला एग्रीकल्चरल फैमिली माँ मनाना एग्रीकल्चर आपको तो माँ फादर अच्छी मंची आर्टिस्ट अन्य म्यूजिक इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अन्य प्लेयर्स तो उन्हें माँ माँ मदर चेन लपानी पोलम पानी इनका वंटा जेड हम अंतवारा के नहीं ना फैमिली ने उन्हें फर्स्ट जेनरेशन एडिकेटर बनाया था मैंने नहीं ना माता मम्मी कंप्यूटर इनका वाला को मैंने जादू को वाला नो नहीं रखा इनके लिए मैंने अंत गुड़ा बाईटी कुछ इन दरवाता अन्य गमन इंची वाल बाईटी कंप्यूटर का बट अन्य गमन इंची दरवाता ये नालकोदनुंडी न Nino, ame jiwitam loki ini mana? Ingu kat ini mana? Nene sadar lakshmi endu ku important sana te. Antar Pradesh lo dandora udhemam, madika dandora udhemam, categorisation udhemam, ABC ni la udhemam mana? Within dalit la lo reservation anta oke, fine out na community, mala community use jas kantun ni. Kinda unna mita satellite communities ku madika laku reservation anta lo. Kebetul. BC lalu unna categorisation ni, SC lalu orang cegah dia ni, movement tu cegah sendiri ni. Macam ni. Inca ikut Telangga na bifurcation ni rejo undo, 69 lalu leader ni. Idar dalih tu memang leader tu. Oka oka ru Ishwari Bai, ingko kame sadaraj. Rondo main movement lalu Telugu states lalu unna major ni. Ini history ni jengga Telugu states lalu unna ye pusur ki inspired ni. ये विमेंट मात्र में इस्ट्री होंगे आदि ना को बागा इम्पोर्टेंट सांग दिच्छेंगे ये में इन्हीं मूवमेंट्स हुए इस तरह एट द सेम टाइम चाल अमंडी की इंस्पिरेशन चाल अमंडी की मेंटर पॉलिटिकल मेंटर एजुकेशन मेंटर आह अटला मलिक असेंबली लो एंडोमेंट अमें स्कैविंजिंग अंतर्चिबल कहीं एंडोमेंट मिनिस्टर Ok, antara cipul yang dua minit garba guru itu, itu lah apa yang dia sendiri, apa decision making dia sendiri, mana boleh kita. Malah, ada family ini, a family ini, itu lah minit dia sendiri. Nama kita mata antara. Nada dusti lo, assembly aina, kutubu aina, muka te, antum dah. Family ni kudu personal is political antar kan? Particular ke assembly aini, family aini, ini, ini ke feminist antar ni, kerja boleh lah antar. A mata ni ada mana ni feminist lah, kerja dimana ni boleh lah antar. Kawatii, saya ingin tahu dearness tu, ekor nu lachin ni waktu walan nak perlu. Ame life nu low tu kadur ada mu important. Ame life tu cahala mandi inspiration. Kawatii ni drastah ni ma life ni. Malih se anmesh walan ni research proposal. Adiyan, walu raya mandi jeter. Publisher gula ready aik boya nak perlu. HBT. Ni nu happy ga rasa nu. Na game custom aku dia leh. Jadi happy kami itu jadi movement leaders, dandora movement, Telangana movement, even Congress leaders. Ini ekoran itu konstitusi silo gelisin do, ni semua bade lara itu. Akar keli apa rajalanu antakal si, wala family member kod kodanu, wala koduku kutulu husband. Di lantar ni kita tu chase, ame nu madya barat chase nu, apa ni ame cari koi, alat barat. Ame cari koi entar mati ingka mili na dahu. आम जिन्हें जी टेलीविजन वाला नेटर न्यूज़ ऐसी अब उसको कंप्लीट चेस हैं अरे मोमेंट तो दिखा बट तो साथ जमा ही नहीं है अमेठा डाली मोमेंट तो नो वो का जीवित हम लोग इतना रिकॉर्ड जी आली आने दी ना बुरा फर्स्ट एक्सपेरिमेंट अरे नहीं नो अत्ला राशी सक्सेसफुल का बाइक कर चुकी व्हाट ए but I wanted to look into enter into this uh, woman's life, Sadalakshmi's life, because she was very much active in two famous movements in Andhra Pradesh. One was uh, Madhika Dandara movement. Uh, it is also called as a movement led by a subclass of Madhikas for uh, division of ABC reservations like uh, in OBC. She, her presence was very much there in that movement. Uh, 
and she was also very much there in uh, Telangana movement in 1960s. She tells that there was no single Dalit man who had the history of non-Dalit person also uh, being present in these two uh, historical movements. So, apart that, she was also endowment department minister. This endowment is related to temples. Temples, you know, there was no access or allowed to that is to enter into the temples. But she became a minister to that. So I wanted to know how she dealt with certain issues entering into the temple, entering into the garbhaguri, the ins inside uh, inside of the temple. So these things made me, you know, to take up this project to write to record the uh, uh, life story. Then I approached to Anveshi as they uh, felt happy to you know, take up this project. The Nalapudu project also was by Anveshi. So as they said, okay, you can go ahead. She, I started to you know, travel again, uh, meet Sada Lakshmi, uh, record all the things. But unfortunately, in the process of writing, she passed away. Then to fill the gaps and remaining things, I met the you know, people with whom she worked, leaders, as well as the people, you know, where she, with whom she worked, family members, all those people, and successfully I could bring uh, this book. Congress leaders, even other party leaders also, TDP, Congress, political party leaders. And these two books are a great contribution to the, you know, Dalit literature uh, body in uh, Telugu language. Moving on to your next book, Akka, uh, this is, I was there when this book was released, Collection of Short Stories, one of the you know excellent books for me. I didn't read it in English, though I read some stories, uh, but not that one, because I wanted to see uh, uh, the language, I wanted to sense the language, I wanted to see myself. But you know, I struggled a lot to finish this book. Okay? The language which you use, I come from Royal Sima, even though it is Telugu, even though I am from Telugu, the language which you use, which you speak, which I speak, entirely different. As you said yesterday, it is from, you know, Telangana, border of Karnataka. I wanted, I want you to comment on the language which you employ in this book. You bring, you use some new terms. Tunakalu. Tunakalu is, I heard, use, I heard it during my childhood, but not now. Tunakalu is beef pieces. Bokalabandi, cart of bones, uh, which is different to the language which is employed in mainstream Telugu literature. Also, something which you know made me feel, made me to feel something new about languages names. I'm asking two questions actually. Names. Uh, Entire this book, it doesn't contain the names which are associated with any religion. Generally, in our Telugu plays, Srinivasulu, Venkateshulu, Sita, Gopal, Ramu, religion related names very much prevalent. But your name, your, your, the names in this book are entirely different. Badeya, I, I wanted to listen from you actually because names have their own history in this book. लिटरेचर्टिटेड अक्षरास मेन स्ट्रीम लिटरेचर इतना मैनिकुलेट चाहिए बात तुमने इतना काशा ये करें सब बात तुमने इतना सांस्कृतिक इधर इन्हें दान प्रमोट किया सुना 
అవన్నీ గమనించిన తర్వాత అట్లా ప్రమోట్ చేసినప్పుడు దళిత స్త్రీలు అసలు అక్కడ ఆక్సెంట్ అనమాట ఉండదు దళిత స్త్రీలు రావాలి అని అంటే ఆ భాష ఉండాలి ఆ జీవితం ఉండాలి ఆ స్పేస్ ఉండాలి మళ్ళీ నేను కూడా కొంత ఫార్టీ తర్వాత కొంత అర్బన్గా అర్బనైజేషన్ ఇంకా కొద్దిగా మూమెంట్స్తో ఉండడం వల్ల నా లాంగ్వేజ్ నా లాంగ్వేజ్ కూడా కొంత డిటాచ్ అయినా మాదిగ లాంగ్వేజ్ తెలంగాణ మాదిగ లాంగ్వేజ్ నేను కథలు రాయాలి కాబట్టి మళ్ళీ ఇంటికి వెళ్ళి మా చుట్టాలతో పెళ్ళిళ్ళు వెడ్డింగ్స్ ఇంకా వేరే వేరే సంబరాలతో ఉంటూ వాళ్ళ సాంప్రదాయాలని వాళ్ళ వాడే భాషని వాళ్ళ రిచువల్స్ని అన్నీ గమనిస్తూ ఆ భాషను మళ్ళీ నేను ఇంటితో పెట్టి కథలు రాసిన అట్లయితే రాయాలి లేకుంటే నేను రాయగలుగుతున్నా కథలు కాబట్టి అది రాసాను అందులో ఏంటంటే మొత్తం వ్యవసాయము పనిముట్లు ఆర్టిజన్ కమ్యూనిటీస్ మధ్య ఉండే రిలేషన్ వాళ్ళ సంవిధానము అక్కడి నుండి వచ్చిన భాష ఆ ఫుడ్ కానీ అగ్రికల్చర్ కానీ ఆ పాటరింగ్ కానీ లెదర్ అని స్లీ చెప్పల్ మేకింగ్ కానీ ఇంకా గోల్డ్ స్మిత్ ఐరన్ స్మిత్ వీళ్ళ భాష ఒకరి మధ్య ఒకరికి చాలా అద్భుతమైన భాష ఇందుట్లో మతం కానీ సాంస్కృతి కానీ ఉండదు ఆ భాష చాలా అద్భుతంగా ఇప్పటికీ ఉంది మనం వెళ్ళి దాన్ని పట్టుకొని రాయగలిగితే ఇప్పటికీ చాలా భద్రంగా ఉన్నది కానీ మనకు చూసే కనులు చూసే పొద్దున సార్ చెప్తారు చూసే హార్ట్ ఓపెన్ హార్ట్ ఉండాలి ఓపెన్ మైండ్ ఉంటే చాలా కథలు రాయచ్చు అట్లా వచ్చిన కథలు అది పేర్లకు వచ్చేసి దళిత కల్చర్లో గాడెస్ వర్షిప్ అండ్ నేచర్ వర్షిప్ ఉంటుంది మళ్ళీ వాళ్ళే వాళ్ళ ఫోర్ ఫాదర్స్ ఉంటారు కాబట్టి వాళ్ళ పుట్టిన వాళ్ళని వెంబడే ఫోర్ ఫాదర్స్ పేరు పెడతారు ఆ ఫోర్ ఫాదర్స్ పేరు ఎల్లమ్మ ఎల్లయ్య సాయమ్మ సాయప్ప వెంకమ్మ ఎల్లప్ప ఇవే పేర్లు ఉంటాయి అనమాట తర్వాత వీళ్ళు వాళ్ళ ఇష్టం ఉంటే మెయిన్ స్ట్రీమ్లోకి వెళ్ళిపోయి మార్చుకుంటే మార్చుకుంటారు కానీ ఇవే పేర్లు ఉండేవి మా దగ్గర అంతా అదే పేరు మా అమ్మ పేరు అనంతమ్మ మా అక్క పేరు బాలక్క మా అమ్మ పేరు సంగమ్మ మా అక్క పేరు అనసూయ మా నాన్న కొద్దిగా ఇంకా వేరే నా పేరు శ్యామల ఇవి ఏ దేవుడికి సంబంధం లేని పేర్లు ఇవి ఒక నేచర్కి సంబంధించి వాళ్ళ గాడెస్కి సంబంధించిన పేర్లు yeah uh, language is different because i mean this language we can't find in mainstream language because mainstream literature doesn't uh, situate doesn't write about dalit women if they write about dalits then we can find dalit language in mainstream literature uh, the language which i use in my book in my stories uh, generally spoken by uh, sabanda caste people sabanda caste matlab means you know from people from different professions artisans uh, washerman barber madiga leather making person like this uh, second thing is i i started to writing in 40s in my 40s so by then i was in you know town i was in hyderabad an urban place uh, almost i was detached to my own language when i started to writing i decided that i should write in in the language which is spoken by uh, people in village so in order to grasp that i went to my village uh, i interacted with people i often went for marriages you know for various functions uh, i decided that i should write only if i uh, if i write in that language only regarding names uh, you know these names are relating to nature in badeya story the boy's name is badeya badi in telugu is cool he was the first child who was going to the school so people started to call him as a badeya in telugu we have suffixes ya and ma nikolamma leni ayya we had chandraya so these names are relating to nature mostly the the boy was born in a forest when when mother went to the field so they named him as a adavaya adavi is a name of forest in telugu so generally in dalit culture uh, uh, we name our kids our children uh, after our forefathers or our goddess like ellamma 
if not these two nature uh, related names uh, that is relating to the nature moving on shall i stop here or one question yeah last question of them women characters are very strong in your book in your stories book take uh, balamma take sayamma take ellamma something which you know made me to think while reading your stories was they are very strong when it come to the aspect of their association with land even the extract which you read it is about balamma going to the field and you know getting trouble from uh, dora dominant caste person i wanted to know uh, what is the role of land ownership of dalit women uh yeah the casteist society lo dalitulaku aasthulu undagudu dalitulaku education undagudu dalitulu manchi battalu kattagudu yedi lekunda oka slave ga vala polalala pani cheyali adi telangana lo oka vetti system anedi before independence time lo nadichindi అయితే పర్టికులర్గా ఇవన్నీ చూసినప్పుడు కాస్ట్ వచ్చేసి కేవలం దళితుల మీద దళిత పురుషుల మీద ఇట్లా పడుతుంది అనేది ఒకటి ఫామ్ తెలుసు కానీ ఆ కాస్ట్ కింద దళిత విలన్ మీద ఎట్లా పడుతుంది ఇట్లా కాస్ట్ డైరెక్ట్ రాదు బ్రాహ్మణ్ నుండి క్షత్రి ఆ క్షత్రి నుండి వైశ్య వైశ్య నుండి శూద్ర తర్వాత దళిత మెన్ను తర్వాత దళిత విమెన్ ఇట్లా గ్రేడెడ్గా పడుతున్నప్పుడు దళిత్ విమెన్ మీద ఎట్లా పడుతుంది అని చూస్తే ఈ స్టోరీకి ఎగ్జాంపుల్ అండి బాలమ్మ మీద ఎట్లా పడ్డది సాయమ్మ మీద ఎట్లా పడ్డది ఎల్లమ్మ మీద ఎట్లా పడ్డది అనేది నేను ఆ స్టోరీస్ వాళ్ళ జీవితాలను పెట్టి చూపించాను వాళ్ళు ఎంత స్లేవరీ వాళ్ళ మీద ఇంపోజ్ చేసినప్పటికీ దాన్ని యాక్సెప్ట్ చేయని యాంగర్ ఒకటి దళిత్ విమెన్ అంటుంది ఎప్పుడు యాక్సెప్ట్ చేయడం ఎందుకు అని అంటే వీళ్ళకు ల్యాండ్ మీద విపరీతంగా ప్రేమ ఉంటుంది నాట్ జస్ట్ ప్రేమ నాలెడ్జ్ కల్టివే నాలెడ్జ్ అబౌ కల్టివేషన్ అది రాయలసీమ తెలంగాణలో ఒకటి ఉంటుంది అనమాట తెలుగులో వ్యవసాయం వాటం మాది వాళ్ళకి ఎంత కాబట్టి ఎందుకు అని అంటే వీళ్ళు లెదర్తో ఇంటరాక్ట్ అయ్యారు లెదర్ ఆ లెదర్ని వ్యవసాయం యొక్క టూల్స్ తయారు చేస్తారు తర్వాత ఎడ్లని పనికి వంగబెట్టుట్లో కూడా వీళ్ళు దీంతో పాటు రిచువల్స్లో మాదిగలు ఎక్కువ ఉంటారు ఇదంతా కూడా వాళ్ళకు ఉండే ఇది ఇంత పవర్ఫుల్ ఉన్న వీళ్ళ మీద అన్టచ్బిలిటీని ఇంపోజ్ చేస్తే వీళ్ళు అంత పవర్ఫుల్గా మళ్ళీ రియాక్ట్ అవుతారు అనమాట ఎందుకు అని అంటే వీళ్ళకు కూడా చాలా బిలీఫ్స్ ఉంటాయి మా అమ్మ చాలా పవర్ఫుల్ మా ఎల్లమ్మ చాలా పవర్ఫుల్ మా పోచమ్మ చాలా పవర్ఫుల్ అని పోచమ్మతో ఐడెంటిఫై కావడము కటపైసమ్మతో ఐడెంటిఫై కావడము ఎల్లమ్మతో ఐడెంటిఫై కావడం అట్లా ఐడెంటిఫై అయిన పవర్ నుండి ఆ ల్యాండ్ గురించి ఒక డిజైర్ ఉంటుంది ఆ ల్యాండ్ డిజైర్ ల్యాండ్ ఉంటే ఇంకా ఏం లేకుండా పర్వాలేదు ల్యాండ్ ఉంటే ఫుడ్ సెక్యూరిటీ ఉంటుంది ల్యాండ్ ఉంటే వాళ్ళ పిల్లలకు ఫుడ్ పెట్టుకోవచ్చు అని ఒక దగ్గర అంబేద్కర్ చెప్తాడు ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ఇట్ విల్ గివ్స్ ఫ్యూచర్ బట్ ల్యాండ్ గివ్స్ హిస్టరీ కాంటెంపరీ అండ్ ఫ్యూచర్ అండ్ రెస్పెక్ట్ మా దగ్గర ఒకటి ఉండేది భూమి లేకపోతే ఆ ఇంటి పిల్లగాడికి పిల్లనిచ్చేది కాదు భూమి లేకపోతే వ్యవసాయం పని రాకపోతే పిల్లలు ఇచ్చేది కాదు వ్యవసాయం అంటే అంత ఇది ఈవెన్ వీళ్ళకు ఉండే ఒక ఎకరా రెండు ఎకరాలలో అంత బాగా పనిచేస్తుంటారు అవి లేని వాళ్ళు కూడా దొరకు యాభై ఎకరాల ల్యాండ్ లాడ్ దగ్గర ఒక ఫిఫ్టీ ఎకర్స్ ల్యాండ్ ఉంటే పోయి మాది వాళ్ళే మొత్తం పని చేస్తారు ఆ పని చేస్తున్న మేము పండిస్తేనే దొర బతుకుతున్నాడు అనేది కూడా వాళ్ళకు ఉంటుంది అన్నమాట కాబట్టి మర్యాదతో నుండి పని చేయించుకోవచ్చు అట్లా ఆ ల్యాండ్ మీద డిజైన్ సాయం అని బలగు జరుగుతుంది 
కానూన్ కానూన్ అంటే హక్కు హక్కు అడుగుతారు ఆ కానూను అనే మాట కూడా ఉందనం అది ఉర్దులో రైట్ ఆ కానూను చాలా మామూలుగా వాడతారు నా కానూను నా కానూను ఉందా కానీ బల్ల దూసుకోవాలి అవి రియల్గా జరిగింది కానీ దాన్ని పొలిటిసైజ్ చేసి ల్యాండ్ క్రియేట్ చేసి ఎగ్రిమెంట్ క్రియేట్ చేసినప్పుడు ఒక పొలిటికల్ స్టోరీస్గా చూడాల్సిన అవసరం ఉంది దళిత ఉమెన్ లైఫ్ సో పొలిటికల్ సో హిస్టారిక్ సో పవర్ఫుల్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఇన్ తెలంగాణ దెర్ ఈజ్ సంథింగ్ కాల్ వెట్టి ఇట్ ఈస్ బాండెడ్ లేబర్ వేర్ డామినెంట్ కాస్ట్ పీపుల్ దే డోంట్ వాంట్ ద లీస్ టు యు నో హ్యావ్ ప్రాపర్టీ టు హ్యావ్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ బట్ దే షుడ్ వర్క్ ఇన్ దేర్ ఫీల్డ్స్ ఓన్లీ ఫర్దర్ కాస్ట్ ద ఇంపాక్ట్ ఆఫ్ కాస్ట్ ఆన్ దళిత్ ఉమెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ లైక్ గ్రేడెడ్ ఫస్ట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆన్ వైశ్య దెన్ శుద్ర దెన్ దళిత్ మెన్ దెన్ టు ఉమెన్ Uh, women have much association with the land because they work they spend lot of their time with agriculture even though landlord has 50 acres it is there is who work in the fields particularly dalit women uh, in in telugu there is this saying like madiga uh, people uh, know uh, about agriculture they have the knowledge about agriculture because they make tools really agricultural agriculture related tools from leather uh, you know uh, that's why there is that saying so it shows that dalits have much knowledge about land further in my culture when we want to give you know our daughters to uh, marriage we first thing we ask is about land about agriculture do you have land or do you know uh, you know agriculture work so that's the importance of uh land uh, uh in relation to women even in the in this story uh, character called sayama she knew the value of land she knew that land gives food security that's why when they when dominant caste people ask her offer her money for her services she demands land than money because she knew the value of uh, land that is thank you uh, nikol <laughs> so when you need to do the reading man <laughs> okay so um since kobu already did her uh, the reading of her food extract It's a very satisfying part in that story, isn't it? <laughs> I enjoyed it. Uh, can you read that out? So, um, who wants to go first? Okay. I'm going to go first. 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 அவளது மனதிற்கு மட்டும்தான் தெரியும் வீட்டிற்கு வந்த அடுத்த நாளில் அம்மாவிடம் ஒரே முடிவோடு சொன்னாள் நான் அவனோட மறுபடி வாழ மாட்டேன் உலா கொடுக்கணும் இவளது முடிவில் அம்மா அதிர்ச்சியோ வருத்தமோ கொண்டதாகவோ தெரியவில்லை சரி கொடுக்கலாம் என்பது போல அமைதியாக வழியே பார்த்தபடி அமர்ந்திருந்தார் அவ்வப்போது அவளது முக்காட்டிற்குள் தெரிக்கும் காச நோய் இருமடை தவிர வேறொரு சலனமும் இல்லாமல் அமர்ந்திருந்தார் அம்மாவின் மனதிற்குள் என்ன மாதிரி என்ன ஓட்டம் இருக்கும் என்பதை இவள் அறிவார் படுகாவி பெயர் பச்சை வன்னியின் மகள் பால் மனம் மாறாம கட்டிக்கிட்டு போய் கண்டபடி பொம்பளை பொறி கிட்டி கடைசியில் அவள் உடம்ப புண்ணாக்கினது பத்தாதுன்னு ரெண்டாம் பேர் பொண்டாட்டியை கட்டிட்டு வந்திருக்கிறாள் நாசமாக போகும் கடும் இருமடி உடைய வாயுக்கு அரற்றினாள் ஆசை அம்மா ஒரு நாளும் தான் வெளியே தெருவ போய் உள்ள தொழுகை விவாதத்துக்கு ஓதுகை குஸ்தி மாட்டு உடம்பு ஆசாமாசம் எதையும் கண்ணுல காட்டாம என் பிள்ளைய சீரழிச்சு வீட்டுக்குள்ள வச்சுட்டு இன்னைக்கு ஒரே அடியா என்ன தூக்கி கருணமணி கட்டிட்டு வந்து நிற்கிறாரே அழல் பட்ட பொட்ட பிள்ளைய பெற்று வச்சுக்கிட்டு விடாமல் பதுங்க அம்மாவின் குரல் எரிச்சல் உண்டாக்குவதாக இருக்கிறது இப்ப எதற்காக இவள் அழுகிறாள் என்று யோசித்தாங்க 
நான் ஒன்றும் சந்தோஷமாக அவனோடு வாழவில்லை என்று தெரிந்து ஏன் இப்படி புலம்ப வேண்டும் நல்லது தானே இனி அவன் இவளிடம் தனது அதிகாரத்தை காட்ட முடியாது என்பது நல்லது தானே ஊரில் எல்லா பொண்ணுகளும் நான் நல்ல 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 நாள் கல்யாணம் நோன்பு திருநாளுக்கு லிப்ஸ்டிக் போடுவது போல இவள் ஒரு நாள் போட்டதற்காக ஆயிரம் முறை முறை தேவடியாள் என்று சொல்லி திட்டியது இவளுக்கு நினைவு கொண்டது நான் தௌகித்திர மாற்ற இருக்கேன் இனி நீ யார் வீட்டு மவுத்துக்கும் மூணாம் நாள் கத்திரிட்டு பாத்திட்டாவுக்கு போகக்கூடாது வீட்டுல எந்த நாளும் பாத்திட்டா ஓகிறேன்னு அனாச்சாரம் பண்ணக்கூடாது சமயங்களில் மானியா சுவைதா இவர் எங்கேயும் பின்புற்று சட்ட திட்டங்களை கொண்டு வந்து சேர்த்தாங்க தெரியலையே நான் என்ன அந்த ஒழுக்கத்து புதன் பாத்தியாவதாம இருக்கிறார் இருபத்தி ஏழாயிரம் அளவு பாத்தியாவதாம இருக்கிறது என் ஆயுள் முழுக்க ஓடி கொண்டிருந்த பாத்தியாவ எப்படி ஓதாம இருக்க என்று குழந்தை கேட்பார் அதிலும் ஊர் கல்லூரிக்கு பள்ளிவாசலில் தலைக்கட்டு பணம் கட்டாமல் இருக்கும் போது பொங்கி புள்ளி அழுவார் யாரெல்லாம் ஊரெல்லாம் கண்டுபி சோறும் ஆணவும் திங்கிது அந்த நாசாவை திங்கக்கூட இவன் விடமாட்டேன் என்கிறான் யாருக்கோ இவனுக்கு நல்ல வித்தியை கூறுகிறது ஊரில் பெண்கள் என்று பெண்கள் எல்லாம் வெளிநாட்டு செலை உறுப்புவதை கௌரவமாக நினைத்து உறுப்பினார்கள் என்றால் இவளுக்கும் சுவைதாவிற்கும் மட்டும் கனமான பாலியஸ்டர் சேலைகளை வாங்கி வந்து உடுத்தி தர ஊர்த்த சொல்வார் ஊர்ல இருக்கிற பொட்டச்சிகள் எல்லாம் அதற்கு மரியாதை தெரியாம உடம்பெல்லாம் தெரியற மாதிரி சேலையை உடுத்திக்கிட்டு தெரியுதாளுங்க உடம்ப காட்டிக்கிட்டு அதுக்கு மொட்டை குண்டியா தெரிய வேண்டியதுதானே புருஷன்காரன் உசுல வச்சுக்கிட்டு திரிந்தாங்க என்பார் சுவைதா பாலியஸ்டர் சேலையை தூக்கி எறிஞ்சி விட்டு சொல்வார் போத்தா போ சேலை மெலிசா இருந்தா என்ன காத்தோட்டமா இருக்கும் இல்ல இந்த பாலியஸ்டரை எல்லாம் வயசான காலத்துல எனக்கு தூக்கி சுமக்க ஏழாது இனி இந்த கிழவி மொழையை எவன் உறுத்துக்கிட்டு பார்க்க போறான் உன் கொண்டாஞ்சியை கட்ட சொல்லு மெஹருக்கு அந்த மெலிய குடைவுகள் என்றால் அவ்வளவு தெரியும் அம்மா இவனது பதிமூன்று வயதிலிருந்தே ஒவ்வொரு சேலையாக பார்த்து பார்த்து வாங்கி ஐம்பது சேலையை சீரி வைத்தார் வர்றவர்களிடம் பெருமையாக சொல்வார் என் மகளுக்கு ஐம்பது வெளிநாட்டு சேலை சீர்ந்து வைக்கிற கலருக்கு நாலு சேலை வயசுக்கு வந்து ரெண்டே வருஷத்துல ஐம்பது சேலை இப்ப கட்டி கொடுக்கலன்னா அடுத்த ரெண்டு வருஷத்துல நூறு சேலை சேர்த்திருக்கு கல்யாணத்திற்கு முதல் நாள் பாத்திகாவிற்கு வந்தவர்களிடம் அம்மா அடித்த பெருமையை நினைத்து கொண்டார் முதல் சில வருடங்கள் ஒழுங்காகத்தான் இருந்தான் இரண்டு வருடம் சவுதிக்கு போயிட்டு வந்த பிறகு அந்த சேலைகள் ஒன்றை கூட இவர் உடுத்து விடவில்லை மிசன் நீண்ட ஒரு பெருமூச்சின் வழியே புலா கொடுப்பதற்கான நியாயங்களை நினைவூட்டுக் கொண்டார் மகள் தான் சிக்கிக் கொண்டிருந்த குகையிலிருந்து வெளியேறவே முடியாது என்று இருந்த நிலையில் இறைவனாகவே ஒரு வழியை காட்டிவிட்டானோ என்று நினைத்து ஆசுவாசப்படுத்தி கொண்டார் நாற்று நாள் பருவனுக்கு எப்படி வாழாவிற்கு பட்டம் கிடைத்ததோ அதே போல தனக்கும் அதே பட்டம் கிடைக்கப் போகிறது என்று நினைத்து கொண்டார் This is a novel called Vivid Dreaming uh, and it's been published by Tintin Access uh, Press in the UK and the Penguin Random House uh, in India. So I, as a translator, I would really urge you to buy the book. Uh, I'm going to read the translation. As she lay in bed, Meha tried to reason whether her decision to leave him was solely because of his second marriage. Only her heart knew the truth. The day after she came to her mother's home, she told her flabby. I will not live with him again. We had to seek the Kula. It did not appear as if her decision either shocked or upset her mother. As if she agreed with her daughter's intention of asking for a divorce, she sat down calmly beside her. The two women sat in silence, an intermittent tubercular cough occasionally ringing out from within Meher's mother's burqa. Meher knew the chain of thoughts that was running through her mother's head. This singing bastard, my innocent daughter, he married her when she was barely a child, and as if it was not enough to leave her body wounded and savaged, he has the gall to marry a second time. May he perish in hell. As he coughed loudly, was there a single day, my child, when you could step out of the house? All the time, it was prayer, ibadat. He ruined my daughter, never showed her any of the world's pleasures, kept her locked up, and now he has married another woman. Her mother raged on and on, her words already starting to tire Mahal. 
What was the use of crying over spilt milk? Why did her mother have to lament when she knew Meha was herself unhappy with him? Was this not a blessing in disguise, since now he could no longer lord over her? Would life not be peaceful now? All the, all the village women would wear lipstick on festive occasions, at a wedding or Eve celebrations. On the one occasion she wore it, her husband had called Meher a prostitute a thousand times. I am a member of the Tabligi Jamaat. From now on, you need not go to pay condolences for a death in anyone's family, nor to the ritual observation on the third day. You must not deviate from the true, true path of the religion. You must stay at home and recite the Fatiha. Even Subaida would wonder where her son got all these rules and regulations from, for how could she not write the, recite the Fatiha on Wednesday or the 27th day of the month? She had been doing so her entire life. She would complain endlessly. When she was not allowed to make a donation to some cause or the other, she sobbed and sobbed. The whole village is feasting on kanduri rice and curry, but this man is not even letting us taste it. She prayed to God to bestow her son with some good sense. When the women of the village wore light cotton or chicken saris as a matter of pride, Hassan would buy thick polyester ones for the women in his household. These village women, they lack any propriety or morality and drape the saris so their whole body is exposed. It would be better if they went about bare ass instead. So when they would refuse to wear the polyester saris, if my sari is thin, at least it will not be suffocating. It will rest easily and it will be breathable. In my old age, I cannot carry this heavy polyester. At this point in my life, who will stare at this old lady's dress? Tell your wife to wear them if you must. <coughs> Meha treasured her lighter saris. Her mother had selected them with great care and since her 13th birthday had amassed about 50 saris as part of her dowry. To guess who would visit, Asya would proudly say, I'm keeping some of the finest Indian saris for my daughter. Over two years, I've collected 50 saris. If I do not get her married now, in two more years, I will have a hundred. Meher thought. Um, sorry, I'm going to skip a little bit. For a couple of years, Hassan behaved as a man ought to. But after his two years stint in Saudi Arabia, he forbade Meher to wear even a single one of her thin saris. Meher sighed. She reminded herself of all the reasons why she should divorce him. She consoled herself with the thought that God has shown her the way out of a trap, that she could never, ha never have escaped otherwise. But just as her sister-in-law Parveen had been labelled a failure, so she too would inevitably become one in the eyes of her community. Um, I vividly remember this poem because I actually um, worked on this at our, uh, I read this at Arshakti in 2010, 12 years ago, so it's a, it's a nice memory to go back to. We were part of a translation workshop, so and this I think got translated into German and a couple of other languages. Scrutiny, for an affair. Trust any man who is allergic to children, carries a civil war in his eyes, travels a lot, and speaks up when you're subjected to society's customary stone throwing. This hero has a history of scandals. Trust this man to never let you down or stand you up, even if it involves rising from the dead. I mean, for marriage, trust a man only after you've dunked his head in buckets of freezing water, trust all the truths spilling out of him when you've slipped like soap on skin, rusty pins under his toenails. Eyes wide open, trust him as you take him on an electric dance that makes his penis sing. Test him to trust him, detest him to trust him. Trust a man through faith in all forms of torture, which is how men trust each other. wondering, I mean, just about half, less than half an hour to go, so we could open it up. And I was also wondering whether you have any questions for each other, or whether there's anything that you would have always liked to have been asked, but no one has asked you. Uh, I have a question for Bobo Chan. 
No, this is a question that comes um, as somebody is the next generation of writers or something like that. Um, and I have translated uh, Salma's work, I've read uh, Gomez's work, and uh, you know, uh, been a big fan of it. Um, how to, um, and for me as a writer, uh, my, my, my community, my closest family, my... Because there's not many Indian writers in English, and that's, you know, slightly closely knit uh, uh, thing where all the women writers are, you know, like we most, at least those of us who are friends have each other's backs, we form a community, and we are there for each other. So even if we are not publicly friends, we have these gossip networks that keep us together, and we find strength, strength in each other. But every time, at least, you know, like when I try to work with the Tamil literary circle, I find that um, feminist solidarity or women's solidarity doesn't come across so easily. And I would like you to talk about it. Why is it that it's, maybe is it different for our generation? Or is it different because I operate in the Anglophone context? So I just want to know a little bit about that, like your reflections on that. Especially I think uh, Gogu Akka will have a lot to say on feminism and you know other things. And are they really in solidarity, you know, feminist writers? And I think uh, Salma as well, like maybe not take names, but. There is politics. Uh, even um, as a Telugu writer, I am a Telugu writer. I am a Telugu writer. I am a Hyderabad Telugu writer. I am a 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 Telugu writer. Uh, dhani, identity self respect I am proud of so much. Telangana Madiga, I am proud. Uh, a proud e nanu, uh, community women that get this thing. Wale not baga strength teacher. Uh, Madiga women gani, Telangana Madiga women gani, even Andhra lo Sunduru Madiga women, Achunduru Mala women. Karcheru Madiga women, Ilanta Wala Strabillo, major role. I inspiration Wala Strabil Desharu, Nin Pasta Chadukuna Gavati, Nin Raya Liane, Na Dedication. Nenu leader name. Can he leader Wundi Chala problems? Time Dorka, time ever. Kavata leadership in Paka, Paka Vetishi. Writing ke undali ani thi. Yen dekhte, andaru leader lai thevo rashaval leeru. Kani maas trila gurinchi raya li telanga na madhya trila gurinchi. Even andra madhya trila gurinchi, maas trila gurinchi raya li ani thi. Compulsory chadu kuna valle tappa go raya le. Na kade uppa identity gori chindi. Illa ni ano powerful ga rashna pur automatic ga compulsion la na recognition osta. Feminist la nundi gani, left nundi gani. Compulsion. <laughs> uh, politics. Uh, I don't know. There is a solidarity for me because there are movements in Telangana. So, in context of movements, I get solidarity. But uh, I face problem when it comes to writing. As I am as a writer, you know, here I am a writer from Telugu language, Telugu writer. But when I go back to my place, Telangana, there this division starts. Dalit writer, Telangana Dalit writer, Telangana Dalit woman writer. So in literature, uh, 
there are politics. That's the problem uh, for me. But otherwise, I feel proud for uh, being a writer, for writing. I'm writing about my community women, about Madhya community women. There is very less writing about them. Uh, so I take responsibility. In fact, that pride which I have, you know, uh, taken me to my community women who inspires me a lot, who gives me you know, inspiration to write. Uh, so when I get that inspiration, I write uh, with compulsion and that gives me the recognition. I, 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 I know that my writings give me recognition, identity, so yeah. I'm just Salma. I'm going to rephrase a little bit and kind uh, of throw light. So when Salma's work was published in the UK, and a uh, lot of us admired the work also because it spoke about being Muslim in a different context. But Islamophobia is still very present in Britain. So um, I want to draw the comparison that even if you know it's not a, what what is happening may not be a subjective conversation within Tamil Nadu. It's still an internationally an issue that resonates. And your circle is not just your Tamil audience, no? it's a much broader circle. So how do you form these solidarities like, you know? And not only the literary community in Tamil Nadu, but how do you identify yourself with a larger activist literary community? Upon the first Muslim woman uh, novel, novelist, for uh, a controversial subject, uh, women or sexuality, but full of desires, and a shame in the basement. Upon but readers I am very in the women writers, they don't say that. Reviews are made for them. They are a group of Arthamadiana. I'm not a worker on them. They play park run and tell you no left. Reader on the end of my day, park run up run and a mother. I'm not a worker country, but the Ghana was a shame that they knew. But a Pedu review Rama or the man of politics in your own life to the Pramapur meeting. You shall under the Kapra on the Raya Lamina and the Sami translation of the other. I put a Raya very little support in a third. You know, Mona and Yerk, other writers, other human writers, faces of the Thaiker, support under the Thaiker. அதனால <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Salma, for the answer because it truly really, she's kind of brought out what I was trying to hint at, and you know the, the contrast also between Shamla's work and Salma's. I'm going to translate <coughs> this way. Salma starts saying, "My first novel was about Muslim women and their desire, and uh, this was a work that was uh, you know deemed very controversial in the Tamil, and I received all sorts of threats from the fundamentalists of my community." 
And until today, I do not think that these fundamentalists are willing to forgive me for that novel. And at that point, I felt really afraid. I felt really afraid because have I done such a mistake that requires so much anger and so many threats? And when the English translation of the book came and the support that I got from the general readership that, you know, let me, kept me going. And I wanted to say that afterwards I wrote my second novel and for my second novel it's very interesting but I have to say this is that there was not a single review in Tamil and it was not just there was no single review but also my own friends, my own you know uh, literary critics, those who were in my circle, nobody said anything about it and it was as a writer it was very perplexing for me and also frustrating because I did not know how this work was being received. And, uh, and then at that moment I realized that there is a certain politics here. I know that there, something is happening here and what I, um, I, I want to know, I just want to record that there is a silence. Uh, it's, it's a, silence exists among writers, among women writers and there is a, a deficiency of support or a lack of support. I do not want to comment on the reasons for this because I don't think it's uh, to my benefit. But definitely that this uh, this exists and uh, I don't also want to second guess why this is happening. But once again it was the translation that paved the way for you know receiving support, receiving uh, attention, receiving critical uh, uh, acclaim. And that's also what enthused me to write my third novel. So, um, well, thank you, that's really, those are such interesting questions and uh, answers. And interesting questions, well done. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, so do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, Jenny? Uh, the intimate spaces, the violence in the intimate space, and also the violence uh, in the society, in the uh, public spaces. So when you write uh, about uh, violence in the intimate space, like family, uh, or you know, in a relationship, um, once you finish writing, you know, uh, how does it feel? Is it, is it can we put it like it's a, it is a process of catharsis? Is it only that you know you write it so that there's a huge relief that you put it, uh, uh, whatever your personal experience on a piece of paper, or also you see it as a very larger, you know, political, um, you know, uh, project. In a sense, there's no much of a difference between what's happening outside uh, your body, outside your family, and you know, and inside. The intimate space and inside your body. Chalas, the Srema, the crisis, the intimate crisis, the Tarvata, the Yudama, the battle, continue battle, the story complete. The Adamta in Tarvata, the relief and satisfaction and tiredness. The Parita in the tired I put in sometimes. I got fever after some stories. <laughs> um, I'm scaring if I say people openly, oh, this Shamala is this much weak. I don't want that feeling, <laughs> that comment. But I am saying today, one story I wrote about my grandmother, great great grandmother. I fall sick one week. Who oh, these lives? My people lived that, that time. They lived because they are here. That gave me so much. Uh, if you think only sometime, it's not big effect, but when you start writing all that, it will take so much energy and um, yeah, time. That's why I fall sick. One week fever. That is my experience. But after that, I am so satisfied. People look around the story. Oh, it's a beautiful story, wonderful story, amazing story. Oh, my time is all gone. <laughs> I get a new energy. That is the process. I think so. <laughs> எழுதலாமா <laughs> 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 
இது எப்பவுமே எனக்குள்ள இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு பிரச்சனை ஏன்னா எழுதிட்டு போறது அப்படிங்கறது வந்து நம்மளுடைய முடிவா இருக்கணும் அதுக்கான ஒரு சுதந்திரத்தை என்ன நம்ம நோக்கி பயிற்சிக்கல அப்படிங்கிறப்போ அந்த சிக்கல் இருந்துகிட்டே தான் இருக்கு குறிப்பா இப்போ ஒரு என்னோட நாவல்ல கூட ஒரு லவ் ஜிஹாத்ங்கிற விஷயத்த வந்து பேச ஆரம்பிச்சு அது எழுதி முடிக்கிற வரைக்கும் அந்த முடிவை நான் என்ன பண்ணுறது அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு பெரிய ஒரு அது மனக்குழப்பமும் பயமும் தயக்கம் இது மாதிரி விஷயங்கள் இருந்துகிட்டே இருந்தது அதுலேயே ஒரு பெரிய ஒரு போராட்டமாக தான் இருந்தது நிறைய கதைகள் வந்து எழுத என்ன எழுதி முடிக்கிறப்போ ஒரு பெரிய ரிலாக்ஸாக தான் ஃபீல் பண்ணியிருக்கேன் கவிதையோ கதையோ என்கிட்ட நம்ம வந்து ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்படுத்திட்டு இருந்த விஷயத்துலேருந்து நம்ம வெளியே இருக்கிறது அதை நான் சமூ மற்றவங்கள்ட்ட ஒப்படைச்சிட்டேன் அதை பதிவு பண்ணிட்டேன் இனிமேல் நான் ரிலாக்ஸாக இருக்கலாம் நான் ரிலீவ் ஆகிட்டேன் அதுலேருந்து அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு மனநிலைக்கு போகிறது வந்து எப்பவுமே ஒரு கதையில் முடிக்கிறப்போ நடக்கிற ஒரு விஷயம் ஒரு பக்கம் குழப்பங்களோடையும் இன்னொரு பக்கம் வந்து எழுதி முடித்ததுக்கப்புறம் ஒரு பெரிய ரிலீஃப் ஆகும் இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு விஷயம் தான் அது ஒரு பெயின்ஃபுல்லாக பல சமயங்களில் இருந்துருக்கு அது நிஜமா அது ஒரு எழுதி முடிக்கிற வரைக்கும் ஒரு பெரிய ஒரு பெயின்ஃபுல்லான ஒரு விஷயம் எழுதி முடித்ததுக்கப்புறம் ஒரு ரிலீஃப் ஆகிடுச்சு ரெண்டுமே அதை சாப்பிடுவோம் so i always face this dilemma this is salma i'm from telugu so i always face this dilemma what do i write and what are the reactions that this work will elicit how should i face these reactions and should i write something or should i not write something and the thing is we do not have the freedom to say what we want to say and that's the sad truth um so one of my novels that i just finished writing is about love jihad and so until the conclusion came i was torn apart i was like feel the ending i was wondering how it's going to land i was also in a bit of confusion so i would have to look at this entire process as something that makes me enormously relaxed at the end of it but until then until as long as i carry the story it's very painful and that is a bit of a struggle within me um, so yeah in the end i'm relieved and it's a very happy mindset so that's that's how i look at the process and uh, no i also for myself <laughs> uh, well i i think um everybody because i wrote about uh, domestic violence everybody asks me uh is writing cathartic so and um, there are many ways of answering this question i've taken this question over the years my first thing is um why <sighs> my my first novel was about the massacre of 44 uh dalit agricultural workers in kilgan money and i believe that you know we cannot of course say it is more traumatic but obviously it was a very traumatic book to write so on in terms of scale what happened to me it did not feel anything like that because you know when you, when you leave, when you work with something on a system on a systematic scale like that then it, it is constantly traumatic and it's a uh, uh it's it's not something that you can easily also you know also because the problem with political fakes is that they are destined to fail so they are because people will say oh she's an angry commie people will say she's an angry lower caste woman she's an angry woman and the thing is that you still have to produce something that you know becomes art to the capital a so the thing is as much as you can feel outrageous as, as you can feel politicized you also have to make sure that this is literature that is going to pass through all the gatekeeping that is going to pass through all the hurdles is going to pass through all the critics and blind side them and let them appreciate this as a work of art even when you are you know as a kind of subterfuge as a kind of subversion carrying around your political message in it so uh, and i think that early book allowed me to realize that you know all my feelings are great but my feelings are going to be even more great and it is still to what's called art you know like as long as people don't realize where how upset i feel about it so when my second book was also there i think the shorter answer for this is that if you need catharsis you need friends you need therapy you need a loving relationship uh, and i don't take writing as an answer to any of this so writing is not my healing you know it may be healing for a lot of people but for me writing is art i go to writing at, uh, and i'm not speaking for anyone else this is just me now for me i go to writing 
like completely detached, like how a scientist goes to a lab or how somebody goes to, you know, like pick out the words, make sure that every sentence is on the right level, that I pick the right word, that it has the desired effect, and I completely disassociate. But, and at the same time, it doesn't mean that I don't see healing, because I remember I was working on this novel when I was writing in the daytime, and I was just out of an abusive relationship, so every night I would wake up screaming, nightmare. And that was the time when I was, you know, I started seeing my partner, Cedric. And what took me out of it was the love and the affection and the space and the care that Cedric was giving me as an individual, the love that I felt and the sense of family and the sense of being with a man who did not abuse me. And I think that healed me, not the actual act of writing the book. The act of writing the book was, you know, to talk about domestic violence, but to also to talk about the many ways in which it intersects with the writer's life. So I don't think the book healed me. <laughs> So uh, for me, these are very different things. And I think that, uh, you know, sometimes um, I would never go and at least it's just a very personal opinion, but yeah, for me, writing is not that bad. Like, if anything, it makes me more angry, it makes me more upset, it makes me more outraged. That may not be a bad thing. <laughs> can be energizing as well. Are there any other questions from the audience? And I'm just curious because we have these endings in Gujarati as well, but they are for when um, they're not formal name endings. So, for instance, and I have no idea why this particular example is coming to me. Say if the name is Krishna or kan Kanaya, it will become Kanyo. But that O ending is a diminutive ending, and it will be used only for those of lower social status or for uh, someone who's younger. Or oh, you so. Sorry, or? Intimate partners? Yeah, maybe friends. It can be an affectionate uh, term as well. So is, is that what happens as well, maybe in Telugu or in, in Tamil as well? So it is, it is a, it's a connotation that kind of degrades or abuses you because you're not respected there. But if I was in, a love, in love with somebody and he was not calling me tea, I would feel like he's trying to maintain a distance, you know? Like, so when it's, I, I don't know why we want humiliation in intimate relationships, but somehow the humiliating term is the object of intimacy. I don't understand how it works, but this has always confounded me about language and you know language relationships. So on the one hand, the Tamil D becomes the, the a site of intimacy. Like you call your wife that. You know, if you're wifeing somebody, you call them that, or you call Da as well. Like to somebody who's, if you really consider someone your sister or brother, you call him Koda Vada. You know, and you would not say the respectful term for them. But at the same time, if you go and say that to somebody in the street, it's actually an insult. If you say that to somebody of, you know, like an inferiorized caste or an oppressed caste, then again it's an insult. So this is this is the realm of language that you know it hides oppressions, hierarchies, intimacies altogether. Yeah, I say uh, so. Important question in the name of uh, <laughs> politics, caste discrimination in the name. Dalita. Uh, ब्राह्मण दलित राष्ट्रीय वाल स्कूल के तंत्री ब्राह्मण फादर सन विंटर वाला फ्रेंड क्लासमेट तनने वर रा पिड़ू अदे ने वाल फ्रेंड फादर आये चाहिए वाल फ्रेंड फादर नी फादर नी के हीरो मै फादर मै हीरो वै यू आर्ंग रा they fight each other 
So, in Kokasar Pilis, they mean Antara and the two will Dalit buy one in Vedistara. Water realize out of it. Class law only environment level, direct level. And their politics disrespecting caste. If same Telugu cinema, Kuda, Subayagaru, Subaya, Ada Dalitra Kunte, even Adivasi Kuna Subigaru. Even writing law, documents, revenue documents, land documents. Dalit half-names. They struck and they write half um, when it comes to names in Telugu plays, it has its own politics. Uh, this Aya uh, generally <coughs> out of love, mothers uh, used to address their kids. Uh, Amma uh, suffix for girls and Aya for boys. But in village structure, uh, for Dalis, for marginalized community people, when other caste people address them, they don't use this Aya. Generally, the name is Chandra. They add Chandra, Ramlu, Ramaya, out of love, they use that word. But, uh, uh, but it has its own politics, you know. If it is Brahmin, they say Ramulu Aya Garu, Ramaya Garu. If it is Nandalit, Ramulu, Ramaya. If it is Dalit, Ramgaru. Garu. Garu is. It has what we say, um, disrespect. disrespect in that word. When dominant landlord calls my father, Dalit person, as Ramgadu, Subhigar, his name actually is Subhaya. Subhanna, Subhaya. But that fellow calls him as Subhigar. The child who resents the same thing from his father goes to the Dalit place house and calls with the same in, in that disrespectful manner. A Subhida, my, my father is calling, come. The, one of our stories deals with this. But the, the child, the Dalit child picks up it as a, picks up it and fights with the dominant caste boy, saying, see, your father is a hero for you. Similarly, my father is a hero for me, so don't call, uh, how dare you to call my father as God. Generally, this Gadu, it comes in, between two friends, but in village structure, it has cost. Uh, further, when it comes to addressing that is dominant caste people don't even don't use the names. Using Subhidharu also is great thing actually, half of names also great. But they bring caste name. Madhugoda, come here. I have never heard my name during my childhood from the dominant caste people more, except for my family, my relatives. Satwara, it's my caste. Majwara, Kuruwara, Satwara Nilchko, call that caste fellow. The two level, uh, half name, completely leaving the name, calling it, uh, it entered even into the official records also, in land, revenue related records also, half names when it comes to Dalits. Jadi Abdinra Gavada, no shame on the Jadi working class under the Naria, Randalik Nadi or the Twitter daily in that. In the Terod or the daily idea of the Kavarwa, idea of Pon Sulua, and four of love Poyra, Ayarka or Naya, Vikavara, Poyra. Are they are saying that the Rukasila Randa, and the Teru correct to Randa? it's true that there is uh, all of the gender things that was mentioned and also the caste things that was mentioned, but also there's, there's a question of class that comes there. 
because a few days ago I, for instance, saw on Twitter that somebody um, had written about uh, the guy who was selling India from name and then this guy, like, you know, basically they were using the suffix in Tamil, which is the singular. But if it was respectful, if it was a Tasilda or a politician, they would use the plural suffix. So obviously the, the work that somebody does, you know, decides which suffix is used for them. So, you know, a female worker or domestic worker would, you know, have the singular suffix used for her. Whereas somebody else who is, you know, at a higher level of uh, in the hierarchy would have a plural suffix. And um, I think this is also this, uh, so that's what Salma says. I think this recently also debated in the parliament because Nari Puravan is sort of the Ranikumar asking to, you know, even the caste names that go on the proper census in the scheduled caste list, so all the lower caste actually had the N suffix in Tamil. And when you use the N suffix, it is a singular form of address. So we had to have that change to the R suffix, which is the plural form of suffix. And I also saw this in a lot of translation. I think Kadambi's translation of somebody's work, some Dalit writer's work, uh, this was again a big issue that every time she was using the caste name, Dalit literature, she was using the singular. And it actually felt like you were translating Dalit literature, but actually reinforcing the caste stereotype by going for the singular, you know. So that's, I think, a very interesting thing. So, what Salma, coming back again to what Salma said is that, you know, language is so full of these hierarchies and these oppressions and all of this. It's a minefield. I don't call it text, yeah, it's so full of politics. Well, thank you all. Oh gosh, I know we all have so many more questions, but it was signaled to me rather urgently that we need to leave. So, but we can have, you can, you know, there they are. You can um, ask them all the questions that you want over, uh, well, tea and dinner. Well, let me just, you know, thank them all so much, you know, because I know they're all wonderful and thank you very much for your lovely questions. Thank you. Thank you.